Hello, hello. Good evening. Um, yes, greetings from a warmer uh, New York City this evening. It's quite nice out, actually. Yeah. Um, it's 50-something, I think, and yeah. it feels like summer. And in fact, we're quite warm, actually, right now. I think the heater's still on, so I'm, I'm pretty hot, actually. We're having this classic New York problem where it's always either too hot or too cold in your apartment. Yes, that's true. And we don't even have like the the pipes that make everything yeah hot. like it's crazy we have a relatively modern apartment and yeah. still you the heat is yeah disaster yes uh such as oh. such as living in new york but yeah. um we're we're grateful for the nice weather today and i hope it's nice everywhere else i hope te texas is getting a little bit better i think i yes i saw that it was um the temperature was picking back up into the 70s or 80s good so. okay okay yeah. <laughs> right back to where it usually is and somebody in the comments just said that they got 11 inches of snow this morning john Wollen. that oh, must cool. be in colorado yeah right um anyways so great to see everybody um we want to start off right at the beginning by doing a cheers um and there's actually multiple things that we're going to toast or cheers tonight but um we're going to start off by cheersing the mars rover for landing on mars which is very very exciting um I'm having some kombucha, and Chris is having tea. his normal tea. Cheers, cheers, cheers bears. Cheers to perseverance. To cheers to per perseverance. And for any um, dorks out there like myself, um, hopefully you saw that there were a whole bunch of Easter eggs hidden in the Mars rover landing and on the rover itself. And yeah. I was just telling Chris about when the, I'm sure you guys saw when the um, parachute opened for the rover to land, there was a code in the color pattern on this parachute, um, which it took the internet about six hours to solve. That's actually pretty long That's for the long, internet, yeah. right? And um, the what it what the code worked out to say is um, "dare mighty things," and I, I changed my Facebook profile to that quote because oh. I thought that's that's so nice, especially right now. Dare mighty things. So congrats to the Mars rover. Okay, on that note, we mm -hmm. can now start the session. There's a lot um, of people excited for the session. I can see in the comments. Oh, a lot of people yes. that like pipers. Excellent. Yes, we have You're tons in the of... right place. <laughs> yes, we have a piper uh, featured session, or we're featuring pipers on the session tonight, and we will get to that in just a second and talk about with the theme and all all of that sort of stuff. We're really grateful to Marta Cook for um, organizing this whole thing. But we'll get started with a set uh, of our own uh, first, and then we'll talk about the theme. So grab your instruments. Uh, we're going to do some reels, and we're not going to do these very fast, but the reason we're starting with reels is because the pipers are all starting with jigs in just a second, so I wanted to not have too many jigs right up front. Um, the three that we're going to do are the Humors of Tulla in D, um, Julia Delaney in D minor, and then Mountain Road in D major. Probably do it three times each, we'll see as we go along. Um, so here's the warm up. <laughs> Okay. Oh, and I, I had I had blood drawn, not blood drawn, I donated blood today for the first time ever in my Woo. life. Woo -hoo. And they poked my finger to see if I had iron deficiency, and, and so I have a band-aid on. And that means I don't know if I can actually play. This is that the worst. That actually means any mistake you can just blame on the yes. band-aid. So. That's right. That's right. That's what I'm going to do. If I go to the wrong tune, I'm just going to blame it on band-aid. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Thank you. 
asked why they poked me on the left hand rather than the right hand. I was going to ask that too. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what, and we were just talking about this today. I don't know about those other New Yorkers out there, but I feel like whenever you go in New York to get a medical procedure done, it's very quick. Like, you don't actually know what's happening at any time. It's just like, do this, do that, do that. And uh, so the woman said, give me your hand. I want to see your hand in your, in your veins. So I put both of my hands out, and the next thing I know, she was poking me, and I didn't even know what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't even have time to say, wait, I am a violinist. I need to have my right hand poked. <laughs> so that was the reason. It's totally fine. There's a little, there's a little blood, but it's, it's fine. <laughs> Great. So you didn't get on your fingerboard. I, no, I think it's, it's, I think it's, I it's think every, everything's okay, fine. Everything's fine. Um, I saw that Kathy Hornberger is in the chat. Hello. Hi, Kathy. And also um, someone else I wanted to say hi to. Let me just look real quick. Um, oh, gosh, no, I'm, I'm missing it. Doni Carroll is here. Oh, Doni. Hello. He said it's 72 in Tallahassee. Oh, yeah. Doni's in Florida. Nice. So, yeah, that sounds nice. I can't remember. Okay, we'll, we'll look look through again and check. Um, hello to everybody, especially folks who are new to Tune Supply um, sessions and um, those who haven't been here in a while. We're really glad that you're here. If you want to have more information about the session, it's all down in the description of this video. Um, I'll just mention real quick up front that this whole uh, session series, which are, we're now on number 62, um, is run through community contributions from, from you, from the session goers. And we use the contributions that come in to pay all of our leaders and guests. And tonight we have a ton of them. So um, if you are able to throw a few bucks into the contribution jar, so to speak, which is above Chris's head, and I'll put it in the comments um, and the chat, that's much appreciated. So we can um, pay these pipers for their um, incredible, and I have to say, unique skills. It yes. is unusual to play the pipes. Um, we were and just talking difficult. about how we weren't sure if we had many session goers that play the pipes. And Caitlin was saying, well, the pipes are like, they're not an amateur instrument. Like, it's really hard no. to start out on, on the pipes right. if, if, you don't already, if you're not already a musician. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I have to say, like, I'm, I'm definitely not an expert at anything pipe related, yeah. but it's certainly a difficult instrument. I, I, from what I have heard, it's more difficult than fiddle, and fiddle's a notoriously difficult instrument. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is pretty special, especially to have numerous pipers in one spot is, is pretty cool. So, on Don't that worry, note... they're not all playing together. No. <laughs> no, that would be interesting, though. <laughs> um, on that note, we'll talk about the theme and what's going to happen tonight. So the theme is Patsy Tui's birthday, which is... Is it today or is it the 27th? I don't know. Okay. I, 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 have, have to ask I actually have my notes here because oh, good. Um, I oh, it's the, it's the 26th actually tomorrow. So tomorrow yeah. yeah. So uh, I am not an expert on, pa on Patsy Tui, so I have notes so that I don't say anything wrong, which is a common thing I do. Um, but it was Marta Cook's idea to put this session together, and she actually organized all of the musicians that you're hearing tonight. So thank you so much to Marta and Devin if he helped. I'm sure he did. I'm sure. Um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about Patsy from my notes so I don't get anything wrong. Um, and I also have some links that I'll put into the, um, into the chat if you want to hear his recordings, which are from Wax Cylinders. I was listening to some today, and they're really cool. You heard them. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, and um, also some links where you can find out more about uh, Patsy Tui if you're interested. But um, the reason, part of the reason that um, Marta thought this would be cool uh, and also part of the reason why the secondary theme is comedy is because Patsy was involved in a lot of theatrical right. um, uh, events and shows here in New York City and around the country and of course we are we are in a Broadway show in normal times um, and so she thought that would be a cool kind of tie-in yeah okay so just real quickly so he was born of course on February 26th uh, 1865 
died on 10th of January, 1923, so quite some time ago. Um, and he was born in County Galway, but he moved to Boston um, when he was quite young and then uh, traveled around the country playing all sorts of, um, for example, he played the World's Fair. Uh, he lived in New York in the Bronx for quite a while. Cool. And um, I like this description. His shows included step, slapstick, lowbrow gags, Irish nostalgia, and a piping finale to which his wife Mary danced. So that sounds great. Sounds like it would still be a hit today, actually. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of like what we do. <laughs> That's basically what we do, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, okay, the cool thing is he lived, he lived on Bristow Street in the Bronx, and I meant to look oh, okay. out, up where that is, huh. if it's in the South Bronx or North Bronx. Mm -hmm. but um, he, Other cool things, he played left-handed. Oh. And um, he recorded, he has 78 recordings. Wow. Um, many of which can be heard on the two-volume CD, The Wheels of the World, which focuses on early recordings of Irish-American musicians. I'm not actually very familiar with that, so I need to go do my homework. And the last fact I'll tell you before we show some pictures real quick. I really like this. As early as 1901, he was advertising a list of 150 tunes, and he would record the cylinders one by one at home, filling orders of $10 for a dozen tunes. Cool. And Marta pointed out in her email that if you do the, the um, inflation rate, that's approximately the rate that, that we're charging on tune supply right now. Oh, great. <laughs> Which I thought was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. <laughs> we're in, in step with Patsy Tui. Patsy Tui was ahead of the times. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. He was the original tune supply. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, that's crazy. Okay. So we have a few pictures to show real quick. I hope I have all my things up here. Okay. So this is cool. This is from a program. Um, the um, uh, Burke and Tui Company. And it's from, uh, okay, it's called the Burke and Dury Company have a rollicking Irish sketch called The Birthday Party that is new and contains some novel features that will please the audience mightily. Um, one of the best features of the act is the real music that Mr. Tui gets out of a set of Irish pipes. Cool. <laughs> that's great. Real music. Not real canned. music, yeah. So that's from 1911. This yeah. is a picture from St. Louis, actually. Mm -hmm. um, that's him on the left uh, with, with a few dancers. Man, that's so cool. And I, this is an undated photo. This is 1904. Oh, but great. Maybe that's oh, yeah. True. No, you're yeah. right. That's yeah. right. 1904. Um, this is him and his wife doing a little... Uh... This is the piping finale, I guess. Yes, that's the, the piping dancing. finale. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yes. Okay, and I think... Was there one more? Uh, a Two couple more. more, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is, this is him... Um, let me just read this. He's 32 years old here, seated atop a chair in, quote, the dance scene in Seamus O'Brien, a comic opera. Um, composed in 1896 and produced in New York City in 1897. And the reason that I pulled this out was because this is approximately what we do in Come From Away now. We stand on chairs and play our instruments. It's totally natural. So he was ahead of his time he was, as well yeah. here. And then uh, Marta just set, sent this quote, and I'll just leave it up on the screen instead of reading it. But there's a description of his performance of the Shaskine reel here that is great. Yes. <laughs> it's really evocative um, of the best way that one can play a tune. So... Uh, and of course, you can come back and look at these later if, if you want to. Speaking I, of the Shaskeen, we're going to hear yes. the Shaskeen later in the session. Yes. Okay. So um, I know you guys want to hear the actual Pipers play some tunes instead of me talking. Um, so we're going to start with um, Quivine O'Farreel. Am I mm -hmm. saying that right? I think so. Okay. We're actually going to have somebody uh, come on and do some Irish language lessons. Did I tell you this? Yes. I'm arranging it. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully I will learn how to say these things correctly. But um, Quivine is one of our Tunes by Artists on the roster, and he is going to start us off with a few jigs here. Yep. He's coming to us from County Waterford in Ireland. Yes. And most of the tunes that are being played by the Pipers tonight are, are uh, fairly common tunes at fairly reasonable speeds. There's a couple kind of performance things, but most are playable. So don't put your instruments away. Um, and get enjoy. Your pipes out. Yeah, get your pipes out, and we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, enjoy. Well, how's it going? And um, Quivino Farrell here, coming to you from Ring in County Waterford, Ireland. Um, it's great to be part of the, the virtual session again. Uh, it's my second time, and especially delighted to be on the Patsy Tuhi tribute special, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Um, so yeah, I picked two sets of tunes to play. Um, the first is a set of jigs, and um, it is called The Race of Clonmel. Um, and Clonmel wouldn't be very far from where I am here now. It is only over the border in County Tipperary. Um, so, The Race of Clonmel into one called Fast and Belegnar. So, Patsy too, he played the two of these, but not together on any of the recordings that we have. Um, but uh, yeah. 
Hope you can play along and hope you enjoy it. So. Good start nice one. to the piping evening. It's nice to see Quivian again. Yes. He was yes. on one or two other times. Um, one, I think. One Just other one. time playing the flute. But this is the first That's time right. we've had him on playing um, the pipes. Yes, absolutely. And he was the uh, TJ4 Young um, Musician of the Year, I think in 2012. Marta, correct me if I'm wrong there. So that's a huge honor. Yes. Um, and of course, a huge honor for us to have him in the session. So very, very cool. Um, I didn't get a chance to put the Patsy Tui links in the chat because I was reading everybody's comments yeah. um, and responding to them. So I'll do that in just a second uh, when we go to this next um, set. But before we do that, we have a very special um, thing which has become a normal thing on the session, which is the toast report. Um, and you can toast the toast report if you like. Um, toast, of course, is our cat that we recently adopted. And um, he is, he's quite a personality, yes, a catsonality, you, yeah. you might say. Yeah. Um, so we take videos of him doing silly things. His favorite thing to do is beg for meat that we're preparing for dinner. And so we have a little video of him begging again for some meat here. So we're going to show that real quick, just for fun. 
Like this one's this one's the video of him oh, helping me edit. Oh shoot, I think. that's right. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yes, I forgot that we put that on the last minute. Okay, yeah. sorry. We will show the meat video. That's a bacon video. Yes. Next time. Another time. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so this is actually something else funny that happened. Uh, Chris has been editing like you know twenty four seven for the last year basically and um toast jumped up onto the shelf behind where uh chris edits which the space that he can fit in is about this big yeah and you said you were worried that he was going to knock everything down yes well he laid down and um was rolling around and well chris was um, editing some material for one for the foxes so we have a little video of this with a little sneak peek of yeah. something that's coming up soon so here's the video I think he likes it. Yeah, I think he likes that spot. <laughs> so, okay, now I remember why, why, I put, why I put that there instead of the bacon video, which is the, the thing that Chris is editing, editing there is a St. Patrick's Day concert for Villanova University, which we are, um, which we are producing for them. And uh, we learned that it is open to the public. We weren't sure at first, but it is, you just have to register for it in order to see it. So I'm gonna put the registration link into the chat. The musicians, uh, the groups who are featured are One for the Foxes, including Dave Curley singing. I yeah. just thought that was Dave Curley singing right yeah. there. Um, uh, the Friel Sisters and We Banjo 3. So like superstars across the board. Mm -hmm. So I'll put that link in the, in the chat and you can um, sign up if you wanna come to that concert on the 17th. Yeah. Okay, great. So let's move on to our next set of tunes. I just want to give one more quick Toast update. Oh, great. Okay. I want to let you know that Toast is currently sprawled right <laughs> on the couch right behind me. Right out of view. See, you can see like just the, the oh. edge of Toast next to the pillow there. Yeah, it looks like a black hole. That's yeah, Toast that's, over there. He is completely <laughs> passed out. Good. Yeah. <laughs> He's enjoying the piping today. Yes. Okay, so our second set is from um, Sean Gavin, who I haven't seen in probably... 12 years. The last time I saw Sean Gavin was um, when I was house sitting and Sean was uh, staying there with a couple other people, including Marta. And we had lots of fun, which I'm not going to go into right mm, now. It's wise. Yeah. Um, but it's great to have him on session and uh, he's going to play some jigs. So here we go. All right. Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name's Sean Gavin. Thanks very much to Tune Supply for having me play a few tunes. Uh, I'm going to play three jigs for you that were recorded by Patsy Tui, the great piper who we're celebrating today. Uh, these three are the Made on the Green, Jackson's, and A Drink of Water. So um, a lot of people call the second one Pay the Reckoning, I think. The last one's actually a slip jig, so a little bit something different there. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be playing this set of pipes here that was made by Leo Rosum for Al Purcell, who taught me to play the pipes. And um, I hope you enjoy them.
Thanks very much. Woo. Fantastic. <laughs> I like the glowing wrist um, and somebody thought that Sean is a robot. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's pretty Your good. Your wrist is glowing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I've never had a, what are those? A Apple Watch? Apple Watch. Yeah, I've never yeah, had yeah. one. It's funny, when we used to play on the Broadway show, you know, we'd end the show and we're all, the band has a little feature at the end. And so there's a blackout at the end and you can look out into the audience and just see all the, the Apple Watches light up when the blackout hits. Yes. It's pretty cool. And of course, being the data nerd that I am, I would, and also sometimes we would get slightly bored, uh, not in a bad way, just something, you know, you play the same thing over, over and over. Yep. How many times did we play it? 1,500 or something? A lot. So I would often count the number of Apple Watches and also try to determine if the people sitting in the balcony or in the bottom had more Apple Watches. Right. Generally, the people sitting in the balcony did. Interesting. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily coordinate with how expensive the tickets were. No. Oh, maybe it's, I don't know. I have many, many ideas yeah, about why that was. Yeah, you can go but, any direction um, with the theories, I guess. Yeah, it's fascinating. Or like the matinees had less, I think, right, because right. kind of older folks will come to the matinees. Yeah, yeah, right. It's all very interesting. These are the things you think about when you play the same show 1,500 times. Just, you, um, you no longer think about the show. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, yes. Okay, so our secondary theme for this session tonight is comedy, as, as uh, selected by Marta. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we actually didn't get a chance to do too much on the comedy theme, but I, uh, if you are a, a comedy or joke person, um, we decided, because we want to expand upon this theme, that the upcoming session with John Redmond and Matt Stapleton, the theme is going to be favorite jokes. So I know you all have favorite jokes. Get those ready. They're, it's coming up in um, March or April. I don't know. I haven't put it on schedule yet. But on the subject of comedy, I was thinking about um, pipe, pipes and pipers and jokes, and this reminded me of something that Isaac Alderson, I think he started it, if not, he's known for it. A couple of years ago, maybe six years ago, he had a thread going on his Facebook page about turning uh, Irish tune names into um, jokes. I don't know how to, I, I don't know how to explain this exactly, but you take one word from the tune name and turn it into the word lobster. Do you know about this? Oh yeah, you told me about this. So for example. He uh, Chan just played the the maid on the green, yeah. right? So you would say the lobster on the green, or the maid on the lobster. The maid on the lobster. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Yes. Or um, let's see, kiss the lobster behind the barrel. Oh, yeah. um, Merrily lob kiss the lobster. Merrily kiss the lobster's wife. I buried my lobster and danced on her grave. The lobster's pantalettes. It's etc. etc. Yeah. So I think um, I knowing the audience here, I'm sure that you all will. Um, uh, create some even better um, Irish tune jokes, and uh, I didn't go looking for, I for for Isaac's thread, but it was like hundreds and hundreds of comments long. I'm sure. Very very um, clever stuff going on in there. So if anybody would like to contribute to the to the lobster tune name thread, you can um, put those in the comments, <laughs> in the and chat. we will enjoy reading them. And then uh, this is like a joke that only Irish musicians would get. To, to, yes. To <laughs> It's pretty silly. Um, anyway, so you can go off on your lobster jokes there. Um, well, Joey Abarta um, plays our third set of tunes. Joey is from Boston. He'll introduce himself here. Um, but um, I haven't seen Joey in a couple of years as well, so it's really lovely, lovely to have him and um, enjoy these tunes. Hello, everyone. My name is Joey Abarta, and I'm coming to you from uh, my living room in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I'm very happy to join you today to play some tunes for Tune Supplies Patsy Tui's Memorial Session. Um, thank you so much for Devin Shepard and Marta Cook for asking me to be a part of this. And um, thank you to Tune Supply and everybody involved for all their hard work. Isolation at this time is very hard for a lot of musicians and you guys are doing a great job by connecting people. So thank you for doing that. Um, Patsy Tui, uh, is so influential on so many pipers nowadays. And uh, I was happy that my teacher played recordings of him for me when I was first starting out. Um, he's the type of player that you would find something new every time you listened to him. Um, and that's not bad for somebody <laughs> uh, that's been dead for almost a hundred years. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy that uh, everybody is doing this because if you haven't heard um, Patsy's music before, maybe um, give it a listen based on 
based on the tune leader in the session and some of the playing from the other great pipers that are going to be playing tunes for you today. Um, I'm going to play two tunes for the session instead of two jigs. First one is called The Miners of Wicklow and the second one is called My Former Wife, a two-part version of My Former Wife. Yeah, wow, fantastic. That was amazing, and I love that he has a picture of Patsy Tui right behind him. Yes, he appears Joey. to be dressed as Patsy Tui as well. Well, Joey always dresses like this. He dresses sure. very, very nicely. Ever since I, ever since I've known him, I don't know um, if he's done that since he was a kid. I, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, I think I met him when I moved to New York, which was, let's see, like thirteen years ago or something like that. Um, uh, by the way, what Chris is looking at here <laughs> is. Well, Toast has flopped himself onto his back now. Which is quite cute when yeah, this happens. it is. I'm going to see if I can get my phone to connect to the computer, and maybe I can show you. Okay. While Toast. you're doing that, I'll, I'll talk about this, this next thing. Um, 
if you're new to the session, one of the things we do in these kind of interludes uh, is talk about upcoming events that are happening. Um, the purpose of the session is to play and also to talk about more places and times when you can play. So um, there's a, a couple of workshops that are happening this weekend that I'm teaching. I'm glad I remembered that I was doing this because I had forgotten. Um, but they are happening on Saturday and Sunday, and they're part of the Fairbanks Summer Arts Festival's Winter Edition. Um, Fairbanks, Alaska is where I'm from, and there's a great festival there in the summer. But they're doing some classes online, which means that you can join from anywhere. You don't have to travel to Alaska like you usually do, which is great. And um, the, the three classes I'm teaching, they're each one hour. They can, uh, they're open to the public. You, you also don't have to be a fiddle player to join. You can, you can join if you, whatever instrument you play. Um, one of them is I'll teach the tune Kid on the Mountain, the, the slip jig. Another one is called Violin uh, or Fiddle Toolbox. So I'll teach people how to change their strings over the internet, which is going to be exciting. Um, and basic maintenance tips for violin for violinists, for fiddle players. And then the last one, oh, wow. Is this happening in live time? Yeah. I didn't even see that. Wow, that's, that's quite excellent. Um, so this is what's happening directly <laughs> behind me. This is why I'm so distracted. <laughs> And this is through the magic of Chris Ranney that this just popped onto the screen in real time from his phone. That's you can incredible. See him holding the phone back here, yeah. <laughs> um, Chris is anyway. magical with um, all things tech. Okay, so I know that nobody's listening to me now since there was right, um, yeah. amazing cat footage on screen. Third, third class is um, with oh easy uh, harmonization. So uh, if you want to learn how to do like super basic harmonies for yourself or for playing with other people or singers, that's the third class. I'll put all that information in the in the chat, and you can sign up if you want. They're each twenty bucks. There you go. There's a little screenshot that Caitlin took. Oh yeah. So okay. You click on the workshop button to. Well, the reason I made this is because I have to say that what, their website is not the clearest website. True, it's a little yeah. hard to figure out what's what is going on. So, yeah. when you go to their website, you just yeah click on workshops, and then um, even when you click in there, it's a little confusing. But I'll put the links in there just so you, so everybody can find it. And I don't know who that is on the video, but it looks like she's singing. Yes. Um, okay, so we have uh, now a, a, a cool thing, a sad thing, um, but um, you might have seen that uh, Joe Burke passed away on the, 20, the 20th, yeah. five days ago, the amazing accordion player. Um, he was born in 1939, so what does that make him? 80, 82, something like that? Yeah. Um, and so uh, Marta arranged just at the last minute for, for there to be a little Joe Burke tribute. Um, Coleman Connolly and Colm Gannon uh, are going to do this, and um, I'll, let them, I'll let them talk about it. How are you doing? It's, um, it's a sad day for Irish music, and it's a sad day for accordion players and people all over the world. Um, I'm sad to hear about the passing of Joe Burke. He was one of the kings, the king of the accordion. He, he changed music, he changed the accordion, he, he changed people's minds on the accordion. He, uh, he left his mark on the world. And he was an important, a very, very important man and uh, a great man to tell a story and a great man to play a tune and a great man to have great technique and great knowledge of the music and great, great collections of music and he had uh, great versions of tunes, a lot of Michael Coleman versions, and I grew up listening to him every day. Every day in my life, I think, when I was growing up, he was on, I could I could hum every tune that uh, was coming next before I even knew what a tune was because it was played so much in our house. We had that record, Go Always Own, and it, I don't think it was, it, I think it was the only one that wasn't scratched because we took care of that one because it, it, we knew it was important. And Joe Burke, was very kind to me as a child. He was very kind to me as an adult. Um, we got to know each other as adults, and I got to be encouraged by him as a child. If he was playing in Boston, we would be there. It didn't matter if it was a school night. It didn't matter what was going on. We were going to be there with Joe Burke. I remember one time I was only a kid, two school nights in a row. He was he was playing in Boston, and the next night he was playing in Rhode Island, and the whole family went to both of them. But he's going to be missed, and his legacy's always going to live on. I mean, he's untouchable. His influence is unsurpassed. And uh, it's a sad, sad day. But we're all lucky to have known him, and we're all lucky to have his music recorded. I was going through all his recordings today. Well, a lot of his recordings. 
and I have some lovely live ones as well, but um, just the amount that he put down, the amount of tunes and the caliber of music that he was playing was out of this world. No matter if he did it 60 years ago or he did it five years ago, he was on fire every time and he had a presence about him, the way he just sat up straight. And even if you couldn't hear him, you'd look at him and know there was something important about that man. And uh, it was just a pleasure to know him and it's sad to see him go. He launched my first album for me, Donald Willie Clancy Weekend. I was never so honored, but uh, there's a lot of things he did for me that I'd be honored with, and we'll be thinking about these memories for a long, long time. So, God rest Joe, and peace be with him, and I hope he's in a happy place, and we hope to see him again someday. Um, I'm honored to be asked by Tune Supply to do a little tribute to him. So I played two of his tunes off one of his old records, Patsy Tooies and Molly Bonds. I hope you enjoy, and I hope it does him a little bit of justice. He could do a lot better himself, and he could do more justice than I can to these tunes. They're his tunes. Like I used to say to my students, I said, you can try to play like Joe Burke if you want. I said, but Joe Burke's always going to be a better Joe Burke than you will be. So, God rest you, Joe. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks for that, guys. Beautiful tribute to Joe. Yes. 
And um, of course, of course, Joe Burke uh, has many records that you should check out if you um, enjoy accordion playing. And um, actually, on the subject of accordion playing, are you going to play your accordion anytime soon? Somebody asked. So, oh yeah, that. yeah, um, yeah, sometime. <laughs> We, um, it's hard to like follow that. I, anything, I know. But, That's incredible. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Um, and those guys are going to be back on later on the session for one more set. They're actually doing, is it our last set? Second to last set. So yeah. stick around for more. And uh, Coleman is going to be back next week with his dad, Damien Connolly, um, to do the, the guest set next week. So there's lots of, lots of uh, good stuff coming up mm -hmm. soon. Um, okay. Let's see. What do we have next? Oh! Oh, a cool thing that's coming up, and we, we're, just, we're just organizing it um, uh, just this past week. We decided, to, we being Tune Supply, uh, we decided not to do a big St. Patrick's Day concert uh, like we usually do, um, because there's going to be so much other stuff going on on the internet um, from all sorts of artists, and we didn't want to kind of um, try to, to, to steal anybody's um, yeah. steam yeah. Uh, at, at this time. Um, but we are going to do two cool... Um, St. Patrick's Day related performance uh, performances. Um, one is we're going to do what we call a monster session on Thursday, uh, March 18th, day after St. Patrick's Day. So the reason for it being that day is uh, twofold. One is that it is the one year anniversary of um, the session starting, the virtual session, which is crazy that yes. this has been going on for a year. Um, but uh, what we used to do in real life when we could actually gather is have a monster session once a year. Um, Mimi Buell, who does our poem, would usually kind of put together a group of, of leaders, of our in-person leaders, and we would all get together and play all at the same time, all the leaders and all the, all the session folks. Um, and the pub was so packed that you couldn't move around, you couldn't find a seat, people would get stuck up in the front of the bar because they couldn't move around. Um, so that actually sounds highly dangerous. I know now, now it's it, but. <laughs> now it sounds highly dangerous yeah. for many reasons. Like what about the fire code? Right. right. Um, anyway, so since we haven't done a monster session, actually we didn't we didn't do one last year, I, I, if I recall no, correctly, yeah. because of a pandemic. So we're gonna excuse me, we're gonna bring the monster session online for the one year anniversary on March 18th, also for St. Patrick's Day. Here's the poster I just made because why not be silly about it? It's a monster session. Um, and I'm not sure how many musicians, you know, we've had 95 leaders in this past year, yes. and I did extend the offer to all of them. Um, they will not all appear on no, Thursday the 18th. But I think about Good half number. of them yeah. will appear in some form. And then because there were so many people, so many leaders responded and said that they wanted to, the other event that we're going to do is a uh, finale concert for the March subscriber series, which some of you are already signed up for. Um, this, this will be one that is... Um, not open to the public. We don't do a lot of non open to the public events, but it's going to be on Sunday the um, 21st, 21st I think. yeah, yeah the, the Sunday after St. Patrick's Day. And that will have the other half of the leaders who wanted to be on the session. So we'll send out more information about these things. They're just getting, we don't even have the lineups yet. They're just getting worked out. But those are our two St. Patrick's Day events for this year. And then we encourage you to go listen to all the other live streams that are going to be happening yeah. from all of the artists, I, I think. On, Including on the, the Villanova one. Including the Villanova, absolutely. Okay, so let's go hear um, some more tunes from Queeving. We're going to circle back around to Queeving. Sounds good. Yeah. Hello again. So another couple of tunes from the repertoire of Patsy Tuohy. Um, the first one is called, uh, the both reels, uh, the first one's called The Morning Star, and the second one then is The Shastine, uh, and that's definitely one of my favorites of all times anyway. Um, so I'll give them a go and hope I do them justice. and. Hope he can play along. I'll try not to go too fast. And um, yeah, hope you enjoy.
Yeah. Woo. Woo. I love that last tune. I always forget about that tune. Um, do you know that one? Shaskeen? Yeah. No. It's, it's I know really good. It, but I don't play it. You gotta learn it. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have come to the uh, what we like to call the halftime, which never occurs actually at the halftime. Usually occurs after the halftime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so and by the time it's going to be a lengthy session, but that's yes, all right. Yes, it'll be lengthy, but I think the pipers are worth it. Yes. Uh, so at the half at the halftime, we have uh, Mimi Buell, Miriam Buell, um, read a poem that she wrote. Uh, for the new folks, I'm explaining what's going to happen here because this is not a common occurrence on sessions, although it does happen every single week at the real Mario session and has happened. Gosh, Mimi, I actually don't know when it started, but it was pretty near the beginning of the session that it started. Um, I'd like to know, actually, yeah. how far in it started. Not, not The, the in-person session was going for over five years before we shut down. So yeah. there's a lot of poems that have been written, and we're going to compile them into a book sometime, Yes, I think. Uh, so let's go see the poem first and uh, what, what Mimi's got for us. Hi, Mario's friends. A very bad poem in honor of National Toast Day, which is a thing. Uh, today is National Toast Day, so what if it's just in the UK? Tooth-free toast joins session mascots of critters who hit the jackpot for forever homes like Josh and Amos. Hip, hip, hooray. Thanks to everybody who's making the tonight's session extra special. And please chip into the box if you can to help keep this going. Caitlin and Chris, you never cease to amaze. Um, also, please don't forget to uh, buy scones for Mary if you can. Send them to a friend. Send them to, to yourself. Also, she's taking order for the shepherd's pies for low-income seniors in the neighborhood. A great way to support her and those in need. Um, stay safe. Wear your mask uh, the right way. <laughs> and eat your kibble. See you soon. <laughs> oh my gosh i like amos's hat we were looking at what it says it says party hat or i don't chapeau de fête yeah, yeah. <laughs> because um i'm guessing that amos speaks french actually i think so because yeah. mimi speaks french um that was great i i did not know that it was national toast day that toast is day. really really great so where are you Toast has retreated to the bedroom for a moment. I'm, I'm sure he'll be back. Yeah. Um, but on the subject of National Toast Day, let's have a toast to toast and all the rest of the um, pets out there, especially the um, the foster pets and the rescued pets. Um, we especially like them. And we are going to toast with Peter Rahill's limoncello, which we are nearing the end of, right? Yes, we are, sadly. But he said he's going to send us more. Oh, good. Um, so, and, and uh, I love the color of it in these glasses. We have a small collection of um, uh, vintage tiny glasses yes. that we went hunting for at an antique store here in New, in New York a while back. So, cheers, bears, to toast, and to all the rest of the pets out there. Cheers. Okay, we say it every week now. Mm. It's really good. We also only drink it once a week on the session, yes. so it like gives enough time that you forget how good yeah, it is yeah. until the next one. Um, amazing. Okay, I'm gonna keep drinking that here. Um, don't forget to throw a few bu uh, bucks into the contribution link. It does work from other countries, I believe, as long as you can um, use PayPal. Because there is a, you, if you click in there, you can use PayPal to, to put money in there, right? I think so. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so here's the box. You can um, imagine what it's like to throw real dollar bills in the real box. We've been imagining for a year now yeah. what, what it's like. Yeah. Um, oh, Toast has, has come back life, into yeah. the... Okay, yeah. Um, thank you for everyone who's contributed. Uh, yes. It really helps us to keep this going um, yep. for now uh, almost a year. So. Yes, and it looks like it's going to be uh, more than a year now that we will do this. Um, yes. We don't know when this will end. Um, I suppose some of you out there might have vaccines now, which is great. Hopefully yeah. by the summer we can have most of us have them. I yeah. don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But tunes in the, in the pub. Yeah. Or, you know, like soon we're going to be able to play outside comfortably. Yeah, that's true. So that'll be we'll nice yeah. as well. Actually, could have done it today. It was beautiful out. It was. Yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, we have another um, special guest now who's uh, going to sing a song. Is it Mike Gannon? Mike? Uh, Mike Gavin. Mike Gavin. I, yep. I'm getting all the, all I know, the last names confused. Yes. The last names and the first names are all yeah. very um, similar on this one. Uh, so, enjoy the song. 
Hi everyone over at Tune Supply. What a great website. I was very pleased to be asked uh, to do a song for you. Um, I was flipping through some of the uh, videos that you have on there. It's really neat. I think it's cool how you're creating kind of a space for uh, traditional music and people have virtual sessions and all that kind of stuff. Um, so really grateful to be a part of it. Um, I'll do a song for you called uh, Nell Flaherty's Drake. It's uh, a song that my first impression of it is that it was that it's just a kind of a silly, whimsical uh, little song. It's about a guy who uh, has this pet uh, duck, or the person in the song has a, has a pet duck, and um, it's like a wild duck. So it, and, and apparently, you know, the kind that flies around and, and everything. I don't know how you keep that as a pet, um, but someone shoots it and, and cooks it and eats it and the person in the song is furious about this um, and is um, heaping curses upon this person who has uh, killed their pet. Um, and um, it turns out that this song is believed to have like a hidden meaning about this Irish rebel named uh, uh, Robert Emmett who uh, led a failed rebellion in the uh, in the early 1800s and um, he famously said when he was executed um, let no man write my epitaph uh, until and basically until like uh, Ireland is, is is free or or something along those lines um, and so the 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 Drake in the song the duck is supposed to be a metaphor for uh, Robert Emmett. Now, how you get that out of it, I don't know. I wasn't able to find any kind of clues that, that enable us to tell that uh, that it's supposed to be a metaphor for, for this rebel. Um, and I, I kind of like it as a whimsical, silly song uh, anyway. Um, but uh, it's interesting that it supposedly has this other meaning. Um, so in any case, the song is Nell Flaherty's Drake. Oh, me name it is Nell, and the truth for to tell, I come from Potel, which I'll never deny. I had a fine drake, and I'd die for his sake, that me grandmother left me, and she gone to die. The dear little fellow, his legs they were yellow, he could fly like a swallow, or swim like a hake. Till some dirty savage to praise his white cabbage Most wantonly murdered me beautiful Drake. Oh, his neck it was green, it was fit to be seen, He was fit for a queen of the highest degree. His body was white, and it would you delight, He was plump, fat, and heavy, and brisk as a bee. He was wholesome and sound, he would weigh twenty pound, And the universe around I would roam for his sake. Bad luck to the robber, be he drunk or sober, That murdered Nell Flaherty's beautiful Drake. May his pig never grunt, may his cat never hunt, May a ghost ever haunt him by day and by night. May his hens never lay, may his horse never neigh, May his goat fly away like an old paper kite. That the flies and the fleas may the wretch ever tease, May a piercing marsh breeze make him shiver and shake. May a lump of a stick raise the bumps fast and thick On the monster that murdered me beautiful Drake. May his spade never dig, may his sow never pig, May the hairs of his wig be well threshed with a flail. May his door never latch, may his roof have no thatch, May his turkeys not hatch, may the rats eat his meal. May every old fairy from Cork to Dunleary Dip him snug in dairy in river or lake. That the eel and the trout, they may dine on the snout of The monster that murdered me beautiful Drake. 
Now the only good news that I have to infuse is that old Paddy Hughes and young Anthony Blake. Also Johnny Dwyer and Corny Maguire, they each have a grandson of my darling Drake. Me treasure had dozens of nephews and cousins, and one I must get, though me heart it will break. For to set my mind easy, or else I'll run crazy, so ends the whole song of Nell Flaherty's Drake. And there you are, Nell Flaherty's Drake. <sighs> We should have more songs. Every time we have a song, I think I we have to have a song every week. That was great. We should we should make sure that. Well, happens. we've been doing better about having songs. We have for the last three weeks. We've three had, weeks a we had a song. Yeah. Do we have one next week? I don't think so. Um, no. But I think that I means so. you have to sing because I've already sung on the session. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm scheduled to be sick. Actually. You're scheduled to be sick. Yeah. I see. I see. <laughs> well, maybe Alistair. Alistair's. I wonder if he sings. Oh. Probably secretly. Yes. I don't know. Everybody secretly sings. That's true. That's true. Um, that was lovely. Yeah. Uh, okay. So another little announcement about something that's coming up soon. Um, uh, as, as most of you know, I'm from Alaska. And actually, somebody just asked uh, where, where Chris used to go to the bar in Seattle. Oh, yeah. There, lots of good Should... ones. I put it in the chat, but there's um, used to go to a bar called The Old Peculiar. That's a good But it was spelled P-E-Q-U-L-I-A-R. Mm. Clever. Peculiar way of spelling it um, <laughs> in Ballard. It's probably one of my favorites. Nice old Irish pub, open till the two, wee hours. two or later. That, that's the wee hours yeah. in Seattle. But that was fun because um, you know in Seattle the bars close up earlier than in New York. In New York they're open till four. Seattle was two, but this bar they would sort of the after kick hours. all the kick all the um, interlopers out, and then if you're a regular they lock the doors and yeah yeah. They do that in New York, except for by the time you get out, it's breakfast. Yeah, you just exactly. go straight to breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> I remember a couple of sessions like that. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so Chris used to live in Seattle. He's from Spokane originally. I'm from Alaska. Yeah. And um, my favorite festival in the whole world, I have to say, is the, um, the Alaska Folk Fest, which takes place in Juneau in April. And unfortunately, last year it was canceled for the, for the pandemic. And yes. this year it's going to be canceled again. We were just talking about how any events that are yearly and happened in like uh, March, April, May, yeah. at least, are, are getting a double dose of pandemic, unfortunately. Yes. But um, we're really excited that, that Tunesplay is um, bringing the main stage performances for the Alaska Folk Festival online this year. And um, uh, so I'm just mentioning it in case you want to check it out. Uh, there is uh, the ability to submit your own performances to the main stage, which is what happens in real life. It's, it's quite cool. From Monday until Sunday, every single day for between, I think, four and eight hours a day, there's 15-minute performances, all from non-professionals. Or I should say nobody's getting paid to do it. Yeah. There are professionals right, that, right. that perform. Um, but we're bringing that online uh, for people who want to want to perform. And um, it is open to people who are not from Alaska. You just have to love Alaska, which all of you do, I know, because I've shown so many Alaska pictures now. Um, so the, did you put the, okay, it's akfocus.org. And even if you don't submit a performance, um, it's gonna be pretty cool. It happens second week of April and you can join in from wherever you, sure. yeah, you, can wherever watch from you anywhere. want. So we'll just see that. I think it'll be that. on Vimeo or YouTube or something. Yeah, we're not, I, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure where, yeah, it'll be public though, yeah. you, can, you can watch it. Um, okay, and then the other announcement real quick. I mentioned the subscriber series for March. Uh, we'll just put the poster up one more time. Uh, those of you who have been doing Tunes Play for a while know that we have done the series. It started with Tradvent, the made-up holiday, mm -hmm. and uh, you get a video in your uh, email every day at 2 p.m., or if you don't want it in your email, it's also on our website that updates every day at 2 p.m., and there's two series that will happen each for two weeks uh, uh, concurrently. One is Lessons, for the learners out there, and the other is performances. Um, so you can go over to the Tune Supply store and purchase those. They're pretty cheap for um, for the amount of music that you're getting, and the videos are up indefinitely. They don't get taken down. So even if you don't have time to watch them every day, uh, you can um, watch them later. Um, and they, I think it goes from March 8th to March 21st, and it will end with that finale performance that I that I mentioned, which is included when you um, buy the subscription. Okay, that's all my announcements, I think, for today. Uh, should we have another set from Sean Gavin? We should. Excellent. All right. Okay, here we go.
Okay, so um, we got a couple of more Patsy Tui tunes for you now. Uh, the first one here is a very old tune. It comes from the 18th century. It's an old harping tune. And it's called, he calls it Pole Hapney. And uh, then I'll go into another one after that uh, that he played also called the Swallow's Tail Reel. So you might know that one. And um, yeah, they're both good tunes. The first one is one of my favorites. It's unusual and uh, it kind of has some cool qualities that make it sit really well on the pipes. So anyhow, hope you like it. Thanks very much. Hup. Hup. Lovely. <laughs> Woo. Um, we were just commenting there on the mixture of old and new technology that Sean had. Um, I, you probably saw the really old looking record player and all the records, and then he had a, he has a really nice mic that you could see in yeah, the corner yeah. there. Chris said, that's the mic that I want. <laughs> We've been talking about buying a pair of those for a long time. Which one is it? Um, it doesn't matter. Oh, OK. <laughs> I'm, not that I would know <laughs> yeah. what it is. Um, Thanks, Sean. Uh, it's so great to see you. I don't know if Sean's watching, but um, it's been many years. And uh, thanks for being on, on the session. Maybe uh, when we can do this all again, we should have a piping session in real life. Yeah. Uh, at Mario's That'd piping be very specific. Loud. <laughs> it's true. Um, and also, Chris, Chris had the great idea, which we're going to try to do. Um, uh, that's Toast scratching on his scratch box. Yes. Don't worry, he's not scratching our furniture. Um, Chris had the idea of doing a 
non-Irish piping concert. So like pipes from other traditions, for, for example, uh, Asturian pipes. Yeah, well, I realized we've had now a couple of great pipers mm -hmm. from different traditions other than the Irish or Scottish traditions. Um, Santiago Molina from Argentina, who plays the gaita, and uh, Cesar Pastor from Madrid, who I guess he plays the Ilan pipes, but um, he plays the music of northern Spain, the um, Asturian music and Galician music and all that. So. Yeah, so we might try to do, um, do a special concert just to, to feature that specific type of piping, which yeah. would be cool. And I don't know much about it, so it'll be a learning experience yes. for me. Um, okay, we have a couple of community pictures that came in from all of you. We'll show those. Not too many, just a few today. Couple, yeah. Angela Botzer sent this in. Um, That's Patsy. Patsy Tuhi with a Guinness. And a birthday hat. And she, of course, wins the, the community pictures. As she usual. always has like well-staged pictures. I know. And yeah. She always has something for the, for, this, um, for the theme. Very good. Dan Snyder sent this in. Okay. Right, you'll have to explain this. I actually, I, don't... Don't, I actually don't understand it. So maybe um, I'm missing something. Or uh, Dan, maybe you can explain. Or perhaps somebody else will get it. What is the caption here? Uh, Dan Snyder, Darnell, Darnell Double. Darnell Double, and he said that he um, this picture is uh, due to a double exposure. Yeah, well, I feel they're, like they're... I should know what's going on, yeah, but I don't. Not sure. Okay, yeah. so Dan, tell us what's happening yeah. there. This is, well, it's clearly two of the same yes. pair of people. But yes. Other than that, I'm not sure. Yes, the mandolin player looks like my, like my friend Graham from Alaska, yeah. but I don't think it's him. Um, Peter Kaysen sent this in on the comedy thing. On the comedy thing, yes. Yes, excellent. Good. You'll have to pronounce this name because I don't know how to say it. I tried to do this properly before. Ara Didakian, I think. Didakian, cool. Um, and this was actually from the... Um, he sent it in for the Optical Illusions uh, theme, although I don't, I don't believe him. What he said was that the Optical Illusion is that he can play the fiddle. But clearly he can play the yes. fiddle. <laughs> I can tell that he's playing the fiddle, and I comment, complimented on him on his wrist positioning, which is perfect. So yeah. I don't think that's an Optical Illusion. Oh! <laughs> Oh, this okay. is good. This is not on the theme. No, this is not on the theme. We received a picture in the mail, um, in the email, from uh, Christophe Lamal and Petra Strobach, who live in, I think they live in both Paris and Brussels, part-time? Part Simultaneous. Simultaneously. Simultaneously. Yeah. And look at this. This is avocado, or some somebody who looks like avocado, in Brussels, in front of um, the, what is it called? The at Atomenium? At I don't know. At I'm not sure. This is for, I think, for a World's Fair or a World Expo or something. Yeah. Um, and I asked about this, and uh, he said that this is another avocado that um, came to him from London. Wild. I mean, how many avocados are there in the avocados world? Avocados all over the world. We have two right here. <laughs> yes, we, we have haven't two. talked about avocados today. No. Um, avocado and <laughs> avocado's friend, Avocado 2, who doesn't have a name yet. Um, so that's pretty cool that there's multiple avocados in the world. Yeah. I, I like literally screamed when I opened up that email. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so good to see another avocado out yeah. there in the in Europe. I saw lots of people are suggesting pipers for us to um, oh. get on the piping concert. So um, Great. We'll write those down. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> That's good. Feel free to send us an email too if, yes. you, if you have thoughts on the piping. Yes. Our email, you guys know it, but it's tunes at tune.supply. There's no .com in that, just tune.supply is the, is the end. Yeah. And that's our website as well. Yeah. Okay, we have um, another set from our guests, um, uh, Colm and Coleman. That's hard to say. Yes. Colm and Coleman. Yeah. Um, so enjoy some accordions. My name is Colm Gannon. Delighted to be here. I'm from Dorchester in Boston. I grew up all my life here, and then I moved to Ireland with a great fiddle player from Baltimore called Jesse Smith in 1998. Um, we had a blast. Intended on staying a year, ended up staying 20. I tell people that I de-immigrated. I ran away from the work. There was too much work in Boston. Went back and played some tunes. So I'm back now, living close to my parents, hanging here in Boston, playing these tunes for you. I just wanted to say that I'm delighted to be asked to play for Tune Supply. They're doing something great here. And they're promoting music during this pandemic. And it's virtual, which is odd to some of us. I uh, wouldn't mind meeting up with a few people, but it's great to hear some music and have it showcased and have a platform to play your own music. And just nice to be involved. So I'm going to play a couple of tunes, a couple of reels. First one's called The Humans of Lissadell that I associate with the playing of Lano Burn. And the second one is a version of the chaplain. So hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
was very nice. That was great. Um, well, I'm I'm in awe. Also, that was in E flat minor. Um, if you were trying to play along um, and Sorry. couldn't, I, I probably couldn't do that either. That was uh, probably not. That was yes. amazing. Uh, it's tricky. Yeah, Bob Beamer says probably a flat key box. Yes, yeah. I think that is an E flat box. Yep. But but Coleman was playing in E flat on piano. Yes. Which is hard or no? Uh, not for you. I don't know. <laughs> They're all um, the same. They're all the same. They're yeah. all the same. Black keys, white keys, whatever. Um, that was great, guys. Thanks for thanks for joining us. And again, if you came in late, um, Coleman's going to be on the session next week with his dad, Damien Connolly. Um, they live live up in Connecticut, so that'll be nice to have them. Um, okay, we have one more set from Joey to do, but before we do that, um, uh, if you've been coming to the session recently, we've been doing a, a hilarious non-related, uh, non-music related thing, which is learning some words from this book the cabinet of linguistic curiosities and i just got an email from uh somebody who excuse me attends the session and he got this book so he can follow along make sure i'm not telling any lies here um so the way this works is there's two words of the week and chris is going to put them on the screen and you guys can tell us what you think the words mean and you can be serious funny if you know what it means you could tell the real answer although that probably won't, won't win you the prize yeah. because um we're looking for funny silliness here. The prize, uh, we're going to do the same thing that we did last week. I mentioned that I was trying to print something and I accidentally printed a tune to our label printer. Here's uh, the tune that I printed. Oh no, that's not it. Very useful. Donegal Tinker is the one that I accidentally printed. And I was like, this is cool to have a tune <laughs> printed on a label. Um, and so last week we did this pri uh, this this um, contest and John Redman won. And who was the second one? I can't remember. I forgot. Anyways, so we had two winners. They got to select the tune that they want on a label, or you can have us pick if you don't if you don't care. And we send these in the mail to you, and you can do whatever you want with them. And that's the very, it's very valuable amazing, prize, valuable a prize. tune on a label. You don't have to accept the prize if you don't want a tune on a label. Um, okay, so here are your I think words. We should have. We need like a sound effect for the word of the day or something. Oh, we yeah. should we should work on this. Yeah, what should, maybe it should be a toast meal. Something like that. Yeah. I'll for, do it. For I'll now, do it. I'll do um, this one. Oh, that's nice. ready for the word of the, of the week. That's very nice. Okay, yeah. great. So there's always two words. Um, the first one, I can't remember what order I have them in. One of them is twarvelment. It's a noun, twarvelment. And the second one is anacronym. Now, you might know the word anachronism. It is not anachronism. It's not that, yes. So anachronym, also a noun. Um, so there, there's your words. You can put your um, your possible answers in the chat. And while we're doing this, I will mention to you what is going to happen next week at the session, because it's, uh, as usual, very exciting. Uh, we have Alistair White coming back um, to play some fiddle tunes. Uh, he is going to be attempt, uh, accompanied by Patrick Ducey. Um, the elusive Patrick Ducey. The elusive Ducey. Patrick Ducey. Um, Alistair was able to convince him to do this, which uh, I have not been able to do. And so we're very excited to have him back. And I mentioned that Damien and Coleman are going to be special guests. And then we have a really cool thing. Jerry O'Connor is going to come back and play, by request, um, the Yellow Wattle, which I recently taught in the Irish Art Center classes. And he's going to do a set with, with the Yellow Wattle, yes. by request, so my, um, my students can play along with him. And I think he's going to talk a little bit about the tunes as well. Cool. Um, okay, do we have any interesting things happening? Not yet, but we do finally have this picture from oh, yeah, um, see that. Miriam, which I want to show. Let me see. I think Let this is of the it. of a previous monster session. Yeah. Um, Coming up here. Is it a picture or a movie? Um, just a picture. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Okay. You can see the real Mario's. Yeah. Drinks on the piano and all. Yep. Uh, she has a baby grand piano. <laughs> yeah. And uh, who do we have there? There's Isaac, me, Killian, Vallely, uh, Kevin Crawford. Who's standing up? Johnny, Johnny Cuomo. Cuomo. Uh, so Jason Cipher on the bass. Oh yeah, Jason Cipher on the bass. Um, anyways, a ton of, of, of um, tread, tread uh, stars, and um, it, it, not in the picture there is the whole right side of the bar where there's another probably 30 musicians playing their instruments. It's, it's raucous and chaotic and fun, and we'll try to recreate it on, in the virtual world, yeah. but um, I'm looking forward to next year when we can potentially do that actually in person. I don't know how we're going to fit 90 musicians. Also, we have to pay for the plane tickets to yeah, get to New wild. York. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll, we'll deal, deal with that. Um, okay, do we have any good stuff here? Let's see. Twarvelment, marveling at a double rainbow. Oh. That's good. That's good, okay. An acronym, word for which there is no synonym. 
That sounds like it could actually be the definition. That actually does yeah. sound like, yeah. Um, an acronym, a series of letters impossible to pronounce with no meaning. Okay, that's very similar, actually, to the, to the real definition. That's interesting. Um, an acronym is the sound of a cat just before a hairball. That's good. <laughs> I love that. Um, Twarvelment, state of mind a year into the pandemic. Yes, good, that's, yeah. that's true. Uh, okay. Do you want to pick the, you usually I pick, picked last week. Okay. Well, okay. I could probably pick. So I think, um, I really like Richard Walker's, uh, anachronism is the sound of a cat just before a hairball. So Richard, you're going to be one of those winners. And then let's see what else do we have? Um, eh, let's see. I kind of like marveling at a double rainbow. That Maybe is that? good. Yeah. Joseph, That's he didn't. That's a good one. No, who was, I can't remember the second winner. It wasn't Joseph though. So let's, Joseph, you're going to be the second winner, marveling at a double rainbow. If you want a tune printed on a label, send us the tune that you want and your mailing address to tunes at tune.supply so we can put that in the mail for you. This is Congratulations, great. big winners, guys. This that was is my, incredible. That's my new favorite part of the session, yeah. I have to say. I don't know about everybody else, but it's mine. Okay, so we'll keep going with that. Um, we have... Oh, I didn't tell the actual definitions. The definitions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Everybody was like, oh, she's done. Nope. Okay, so twarvelment. This is <laughs> this is actually very fitting. Twarvelment is a circ circuitous, long-winded speech. Mm -hmm. That's what I do on the session. Uh -huh. Okay, we're just going to leave that one. I won't tell you any more about it. Okay, and then the an acronym. This is very interesting. So it's um, an acronym... Uh, the full meaning, meaning of which is little known or unfamiliar. For example, they, there's a bunch of words here which used to stand for something. I mean, they do still stand for something, but we have forgotten what the original words, words stood for. Hmm. So, for example, base jump. Like, oh, yeah. Base jump, the B-A-S-E, -B yes. stands for building, antenna, span, or earth. Yes. And I think I knew that somewhere in the back of my head, yeah, but I forgot. Yeah, I did too. Care package. I didn't know this. Hmm. Care pa care stands for cooperative for assistance and relief everywhere, and it was um, an organization during the Second World War. Yeah. Laser. Yes. You, laser. I, bet you know this I, one. I used to know this. I don't anymore. Light amplification of stimulated emission of radiation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we have a shortened word. Yes, back. right. Okay, and of course scuba everybody knows. So I don't think it's an ac that's an anachronism because I think people still know what it means. Yes. Okay, and the last one you might know this one too. Radar. Radio detection and ranging. Huh. So it's a word that's, that started out as standing for something, and we've forgotten what it stood for. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll keep doing that next week, whether you want to or not. <laughs> okay, uh, let's have a, one more set from our uh, guest leaders. Joey Barda will, be, will go last year. Uh, for my second set of tunes, I'm going to record uh, a set of reels for, um, from Patsy's Plane. Uh, there are many, many wax cylinder recordings of Patsy, but um, there's not that many uh, 78 sides. Um, this is one of them. Uh, the first one is Drowsy Maggie, the second one is a version of Scotch Mary, and the third one is a version of um, Flogging Wheel. I hope you like it. Thank you. 
Excellent. Pipers. Great, um, great tunes there to end off with. Um, well, we're not ending yet. We're going to play one more set of tunes. That's but... why you're holding your finger. <laughs> yes. At the end there, Chris said, 10 seconds. And I had to reach quickly for my violin that's down there. I'm glad some people noticed the disco ball yeah. uh, in Joey's videos. We're not sure, sure what that is. You know, at first I thought it was those uh, crystals that you put in your window. Yeah. But they're all going one way. Did you notice that? Yeah, I did. So I think it might be disco ball, which would be very fitting because... Um, Where's our disco ball? Here, we in, have a disco ball. Yeah. And the real Mario's Pub also has a disco ball. That's why we have a disco ball. Yes, is, uh, yes it's, I think it's the only session in New York, maybe the world, that has a disco ball. And it's usually on during the yes. session. And it's great. Um, it's probably one of the only sessions that has a baby grand probably. piano, too. Yeah. Mona says it upright, yeah. but yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to play one more set of tunes. Um, as usual, I've been trying to pick some tunes for our sets that are... Uh, ones that I've been teaching in the Irish Arts Center fiddle classes on Tuesday nights, and um, so we'll have three of those. But before we do that, I forgot to tell you what the theme is for next week's session with Alistair. Um, the theme is birds. At the request of somebody who sent in that suggestion, and I'm forgetting who it was, um, but birds is a great theme. You know who we need on for birds session? Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. Maybe we can. Maybe we should see if he wants to sing a song. Maybe he can do a little nature segment. The yes. nature nook. Yes. That's a great idea. Johnny Cuomo is a huge uh, bird watcher, a bird fan. Yeah. Um, okay, remind me to ask him. Yeah. That would be great. Uh, okay, but the other cool thing about the bird session, and this did, this did not happen on purpose. I uh, there's a there's a great um, aquarium sort of facility, rescue rescue facility up in Alaska called the the Sea Life Center in Seward, Alaska, and they were having a um, silent auction, online silent auction this past week. And I love to support them, so I was saw I just looked at what they had. Well, they have these virtual um, uh, Zoom things where you can meet the animals and the birds yeah. and the raptors. And I won the virtual visit to to see the raptors. So the the prize for winning something next week, who knows? We'll think of something. Will be you can join me on the Zoom call. I think there'll be maybe four or five people um, to to go see the raptors up in Alaska at the um, Seward Sea Life Center. So that's yes. very exciting. Uh, that's actually an exciting prize. I know it's great. The stickers was... are cool, but like <laughs> Zoom with the raptors and Zoom with the raptors. is extra special. And we were there this summer. Um, oh, yeah. there was some footage from on yeah, the yeah. session, um, and it's it's very cool. So, so you can get ready um, for bird session next week. Um, for our last set here, we're going to do three tunes that I taught, as I mentioned. The first one is called Donald Blue, and it was taught in the level two class, the beginner class. So we're going to play it really slowly. And then we'll pick up the speed and go, in, go into two tunes from the advanced class. Those two tunes are Rascal in the Haystack, which I learned um, uh, like 10 years ago when I was touring with Cherish the Ladies. It's on one of their CDs, and I forgot which one. And then the last one is um, uh, called, what's it called? Oh, Stone of Destiny which is a great name, a newly composed tune. So we'll end off with these ones. Here we go. Okay, uh, let's see, we'll go about one, two, three, four.
lobster joke. Lobster of destiny. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> People who didn't weren't here for that are going to wonder what's going on. Um, okay, great. Thanks for stop uh, stopping by the session tonight or staying till the whole thing. We're till, till the end. We're uh, a little bit over time, but that's okay for pipers. Anything for pipers. Indeed. Um, I should have been mentioning this every time we came back on screen tonight. Marta Cook uh, and Devin Shepard, I think, also um, organized all of the musicians, curated this whole session tonight. We did not book any of them. We will be paying them, of course, <laughs> with your contributions. But um, Marta did all of the work, uh, and we just want to say thank you. I should have been saying that the whole way through. Um, Fantastic. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I think she's she's going to also put together a flute session at some point um, soon so that'll be great uh, she's going to curate that whole awesome. thing as well yep um do you want to attempt the thank yous I all the try. names let's okay. see um our three leaders were joya barda thank you sean gavin and quivino ferrio mm -hmm. and then um let's see we had mike gavin yeah with the song thank you mike and we had um colin gannon and coleman connelly yes with the joe burke tribute wow and you did better than i would have was there one more is that it i think that was it that was everybody. Right? Yeah. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Yes. Thank you um, to everyone for joining us. Uh, almost everybody on session tonight was new to the session. That's true. Right? Uh, be besides Queen. Queen was the only one who's been on. Yeah. So That's great. Um, it's great to see some new faces. Yeah. Um, on, on, on the screen, I guess, unfortunately. Um, if you are able to, to help us send money to all of those people for, for doing uh, their amazing work tonight. I mean, Pipers, I feel like, should get extra money. I, it's such an hard it's instrument. Such a hard such instrument a to play. Hard yeah. instrument. Um, so uh, of course we we pay these guys out of um, the contributions, which uh, the link is on Chris's head, and I'll put it in the comments one more time as we as we leave um, tonight. Um, Thank you to everyone who has contributed and yes. who continues to support us uh, every week. It's really um, incredible that we're able to still be doing this. A year well, in. Thanks to you guys. So thank you very much. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, so we'll look forward to seeing you next week for the bird session with Alistair and, um, and Patrick. All right. Okay. Enjoy the warm weather this week. Good night. Bye.